Hey, how's it going? It's Tim Brown, and this is the Hook Better Leads podcast. And today, my guest is Chad Diller from Landscape Leadership. How you doing, Chad? Hey, Tim. Happy to be on the podcast with you. And he just got promoted to vice president, and he's got a long, <laughs> deep background in basically the landscaping industry. Is that correct? Or have you been at other contracting or home services businesses before landscaping? Sure. Let me clarify first. It's vice president of landscape leadership. So I'm not to be blamed for anything politically that's going on. So we'll oh, just vice clear that president. Okay. Not yeah, that yeah, vice yeah. president. Yeah, not yeah, that yeah, vice yeah. president. I like it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I uh, like many people, you know, when I was a young guy in my 20s, I just kind of was looking for a job trying to make some money and somehow just started spraying lawns. I uh, got a, yeah. working for a company and then went from one company to another, had some uh, roles in production over like five, six years, then moved into account management. So I sold a lot of work for about seven years uh, at a really large company here in Pennsylvania. And then we actually started our own internal marketing position. So we were like a $13 million company per year and we were doing like a lot of marketing stuff. And so I pitched this position as an internal marketing uh, director and they took me up on it. And I did that for about five and a half years. And in that time frame is when I met Chris Heiler, our CEO and founder here at Landscape Leadership. And then I came working for him. I needed a bigger challenge. So I would say, yeah, I've been in the lawn and landscape industry now like 22 years uh, in a variety of different roles. So it's pretty much all I know. Awesome. And we're talking about basically the reason that referral programs fail and how to fix it. And I talk about referrals a lot. To me, referral is like the, the best lead you can get, highest close rate. Um, it, ways to increase them are underutilized for most businesses. So, and then sometimes we just make stops and starts at them. So I guess a little bit, what have you seen? What have you seen work? And I guess give us a little bit of the result. First, before we get started, what you've seen happen as a result of a well-done referral program so that people understand that you know what you're talking about. Yeah. So, you know, the whole thing with referrals, I'm pretty sure the roofing industry is the same way as the landscape industry. You know, contractors would be quick to say that, you know, like we get a lot of leads from word of mouth, but they really, a lot of them don't have a very formal process for customer referrals. They just say, yeah, we want more of them or we try to get more of them. Exactly. And so that's, that's why I want to add some insight today to that. You know, when we were uh, started a referral program and started really tracking things at the landscape company I worked for before I came here to the agency, you know, referrals from customers were kind of one of our top three sources for leads. Um, eventually it didn't always, didn't start off that way, uh, but we were pulling in about $300,000 of annual revenue just from customer referrals alone. And so that's, that's something to pay attention to. And those leads you know, they were like some of the easiest things to, to close because you had this social proof from like your neighbor or your uncle or your brother that referred you this company. And so we closed about 85% of those leads are probably the easiest to close. Um, so there's a lot of things that we did, you know, that we revamped our own referral program, um, how we, you know, administered it, how we tracked it, all that sort of thing. So I see a lot of problems with companies that aren't doing those things in the most efficient manner. Yeah. yeah and I think that like, you think about how many customers, customers is that in landscaping? Like if you talk about $300,000 in revenue, like what would be, cause I'm trying to translate it to roofing. I yeah. think it's probably a higher number if they did the same amount of customers, I'm guessing. So like, what would you say, how many customers? Yeah, well, that would really depend in the landscape industry, what type of work you sell, because we have some clients yeah. that are commercial landscape companies. So they sell, you know, these contracts that are like tens of thousands of dollars a month. Yeah. So that would add up really quickly. We have some design yeah. build clients that, you know, yeah. some of them might sell project like 20 projects in a year for a couple million dollars. So um, the company that I worked for, we had about 7,000 active clients. And yeah. I would say, I'd probably say 80% of those clients were probably somewhere around a couple thousand dollars in revenue a year. Okay. So when you, when yeah. you talk about 300,000 in annual revenue, like, yeah, you might have a, you know, a landscape job of 30, 40,000 here and there, but there was a lot of like tree pruning work for, you know, two to $3,000. Long care mm -hmm. programs are like 500, 700, $1,000 in a year. So that's a lot of actually 
that's a lot of customers for three hundred thousand. Yeah, and I'm just like if I if I translate the, that to Ruby, it's probably like a million bucks. You know, like if you think about how many customers or whatever. So like, I think that the the carrot out here is large for these companies. If you yeah. can get your referral program down with the things Chad's about to talk about. First, we're going to talk about the failures, but we are going to move quick. So. $300,000 to a million dollars in revenue sitting out there. And maybe you get, you know, half that or less because you're not really stoking it. You get some referrals, but you're not, you're not creating consistent process around that. So I guess, talk me through why do these customer referral programs fail usually? Yeah. I think one of the biggest things is the incentive that's offered to a customer to give a referral is just kind of unimpressive and really unmemorable. A lot of mm. companies, they kind of give the same thing. And so yeah. when you're doing the same thing, it's not standing out. It doesn't, it doesn't kind of like, whoa, catch you right away. Customer is not going to remember that. They have other things in their life that are more important than referring you business. So I often tell people that your incentive should make your competitors nervous. They should actually look mm. at it and say, how the heck are they giving away that much money? And ah. if you think... If you think about this as, you know, like how much money does it cost you to acquire a new customer? And would you be willing to close it at 85%? Like you should be paying a lot for that. Um, like maybe yeah, there's- that's another question I got is, how, do you know how much like the average landscaping, how much it costs to acquire a customer? Uh, well, again, it, it would really depend on their customer yeah. account, what the average value yeah. of the customer is. But like- I actually a lot of don't times, have it- Quick for roofing. So you probably have it closer than I do, but yeah, I know that, you know, some of the, in the most simplest, uh, uh, transactional companies that sell like lawn care programs are like maybe like 750 again, that first year, but then it's recurring yeah. revenue and they keep them for like an average of seven years. So like, you're talking like a $3,500 sale maybe, and you might spend a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars to acquire a new customer. Yeah. That's chump change. Yeah. So when you're giving a referral program and you're like, hey, you get $50, well, why wouldn't you offer more money? Now, I'm not saying that that's a good amount or a bad amount, but yeah. if you start thinking about it that way, and then you think about yeah. the sales commission, like maybe you are still paying sales commission for your, for your salespeople, but you start thinking about it, like what is the cost that it really takes to acquire? And would, mm -hmm. a, would, a, prop, would a customer even remember that? I, I've seen, um, you know, it's maybe the dollar amount is enough. Like maybe it doesn't even catch your attention, like $25. I don't know for me, like yeah. if I see 50 bucks, you know, like if I'm that small, like maintenance related service, if I see yeah. 50 bucks, all of a sudden then it registers in my mind. If it goes over a hundred, like it has three digits, then it makes sense. I've, yeah. I've had, I've had design build clients that, you know, they don't have a huge customer base each year. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had one guy that offered a $2,000 gift certificate to like a luxury patio furniture company that was local. They had a partnership with. Yeah. If, if you referred someone and they bought a patio or a project that was over 40 grand, I mean, like two grand, good. that's, that's, yeah. that's a lot. And, um, but and for it's 40 memorable. Grand, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I think I'm just going to throw out a couple other numbers. Like we've done our math before. And it was like $6,000 to acquire a customer. So why are we not giving a thousand dollars? I mean, I know that you said that you guys aren't trying to, I'm trying to grow this, you know, like I, I know you're not cranking it up really quick. I will, I will crank this up if I, you know, I want to. Um, so why, why not a thousand dollars? If it normally costs me $6,000 to acquire a customer roofers, I think it's probably more like 300 to 500 to acquire a customer, you know, 10 K to 20 K roof. Yeah. Um, so I don't think that's that crazy, but I'm just, I guess I'm kind of thinking in paid ads a little bit. Yeah. Cause I think it's easier to do the math sometimes with paid ads. Yeah. Um, you know, it, you look at the reward too, and it's not always about money either. Um, yeah. and how you position the money, the, the famous thing, because I think it's because it's easy for landscape companies or contractors in general is to say, we'll give you a credit off of your next bill. Now, if you're like a one-time, like we put a new roof on your house and there isn't a next bill, then maybe that doesn't work. But a lot yeah. of these like maintenance related companies, cause it's easy for them. Yeah. But it, mm -hmm. some, some, some prospects they, or customers, they just don't care about that. Like yeah. it's, yeah. it's like, it's kind of out of your mind. If I just get a credit, yeah. um, one of the things that we switched to at the company that I worked at before this was we stopped giving credits and we sent them a check 
for $50 mm -hmm. cash, uh, they could cash it. And then we had a handwritten yeah. card from the company owner that thanked them yeah. for the referral reference, their name, all that stuff. So they could spend that money wherever they want. Like if you don't want to write checks, exactly. then you could do like a visa gift card or something like that, or maybe yeah. a, a gift card to a, a local business that is like the coolest ice cream shop in town or something like that, that you want to send them to or, or whatever. Uh, that That's sometimes awesome. it's, it's a little bit more substantial because people can envision like the experience they would have yeah. with that referral bonus versus just like, mm -hmm. what am I going to spend this on? I'm just put it in my checking account. Yeah, exactly. Money doesn't feel real these days, you know, like yeah. just like numbers in the account. It doesn't feel like a real thing. So I like that. You're kind of telling a story with a gift card or something like that. Okay. Um, you, you're saying it's also confusing um, for people. It's not, it's not clear the process. So how do you, how can you make the referral process less confusing? Yeah. So you have to look at as a company, like what is your process for submitting referrals for your customers? And what I challenge you to do is look at, you know, what is easiest for the customer, not for you. Sometimes that means some companies, there's multiple ways they can submit a referral to you. Like you don't funnel them through one thing, but maybe you say, you know what? No, we will make it easy, but we'll ask them to do it this one way. So maybe you have a portal that takes the referrals and it tracks them and, and keeps, you know, pays out the rewards and all that stuff. And that's fine if you do that. But I am a big fan of like allowing a customer to give me a referral, however is easiest for them. So if mm -hmm. they, if they have a, if there's a place on the website where they can refer a friend, and it's just a little form they fill out. Um, if there's a phone number they can call and if that phone number can be easy. So one of the things we had was we had a referral hotline. Um, it was a phone number that didn't ring to anyone at our office. It immediately picked up recording and said, you know, thanks for referring your friend process is easy. All you, we need you to do is just leave your name, your phone number and your friend's name, your friend's number, uh, friend's phone number and tell us what they're interested in and we'll take care of the rest. So that way they oh could God. call and they don't, you don't, you don't get that chit chat. Oh, how are you? And some people, they're just yeah, kind of yeah. like trying to do it really quickly. So, so that's yeah. a way you can do it. Uh, you could have cards like physical mail in, you know, address postage paid cards that they can send you a referral. Um, you can have an email address that is dedicated to that just somewhere that's just super easy. And mm. if maybe, maybe it's not just one way, maybe it's a couple different ways they can submit a mm -hmm. referral and make it easy for them. I love that. And, and I just find that like a lot of times companies, they just kind of like, they don't even have, they didn't even think about that. They don't even think about what the process is and how hard it actually is on the customer instead of that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And like you said, like word of mouth, you know, I, we do Google stuff, you know, we go Google ads and organic Google marketing, right. And we do websites, but I just know this referral game for all of our customers could be so much better. I hope that they, I hope that people are listening and taking notes on this. Um, is there, if I just put your notes in the, in the, the YouTube, uh, description yeah, as well, Chad, you have, you have great notes here. <laughs> best notes I've seen. These are the best notes I've ever seen on my podcast. We, we wouldn't know where we'd end up if I didn't have notes. It would probably not be pretty. <laughs> exactly. All right. So promoting the referral program. Guys, this is just directly in line with Chad's outline. He's got this down. We got so people don't promote it enough. Why? Uh, why don't they promote it enough? And if, if it is such a giant opportunity for new business, why are we all not promoting our referral programs enough? Why are these companies not promoting them enough? And what can they do? How can they do it better? Yeah, I mean, they're, you can have the best incentive ever and it can be easy for people to make a referral. But again, it's not in the forefront of your customers' minds to give you referrals. So there are certain times where naturally, all of a sudden, now it makes sense to give you a referral. But if you're not going to promote it, like if you're not going to let your new customers know about it, if you're not going to remind your existing or past customers that you have it on a continuous basis, they're never going to remember to do it. So there's a bunch of different ways that you can, you can promote your referral program. Like we used to uh, have print media. So we would um, the, the company that I worked with, we did a lot of services at the property throughout the year. So we would actually have like these, these slips, like, you know, like an insert that goes in a business envelope when double-sided explain the benefit of uh, 
how the process, the incentive and all that stuff. And we would remind them. So we put that in print media or invoices that we would send out maybe to new customers, remind them that. Um, you could also just, like that. yeah, that's mail. It's already gone out. You're already paying postage for. So why not just stick an insert okay. into it? Yeah. And the, um, mm. the other thing is maybe, you, maybe there's a certain time out of the year that it makes sense for your business to get referrals. So if you're in a landscape industry, that's kind of the early spring early and mid spring. And so maybe you do a postcard mailing to your existing customers because they're out mowing their lawn and they talk to their neighbor and the neighbor's cursing and kicking the lawnmower. And they're like, Hey, you know what? This is kind of now more in the forefront of my mind. Uh, the other thing is your website. So most websites are geared towards, depending upon your business model towards acquiring a new customer. But if your business supports your customers coming back to your website, whether it's engaging in deeper content, um, learning about other services. So maybe you're doing like email marketing or something like that, and you're driving people back to your website. There should be easy ways on the website that people see that you promote referral, your referral program. Yeah. So it, yeah. it just kind of makes it a little bit more conscious on their mind. Um, and that could be, you know, it could be part of like when you fill out a form on our website and they get redirected to that thank you page, you could have messaging right there on that page about like, mm. by the way, in a couple months from now, you're going to be as happy as can be. And when you are, yeah. remember this. So that's something you can do. And then email marketing, maybe you, you, you have um, some mechanism within your, your business operating software that when a job is completed, maybe in that email marketing, that's the time. You know, the job is just done. That you can you know, uh, send a message to a customer and say, by the way, now you're a customer. You can refer somebody to us and you can make this money or get this, whatever the incentive is. Uh, the other thing too is sales. So this is a big thing, you know, like what, whenever you go through sales training, they're always telling you like, ask for referrals, ask for referrals. But there is kind of like, if you have a formal process of how you present a presentation and a quote, I often think that it's really helpful to mention in your sales process that a lot of your, your new business opportunities come to you from your customers because they're so happy. And I would just say like, you, you don't do this thing like, uh, the old like Kirby vacuum salesman where whether he's done with his presentation, you say, by the way, can I have a uh, name of five of your friends and family members? Like, that's mm -hmm. not what you're going to do. If you make it kind of like, this is our culture. This is how our company has grown because we make people happy and they keep referring their friends. I just want you to know about this because if you refer somebody, I want to make sure that you're paid for it. And so just keep mm -hmm. this in mind in the future. If you I, we love helping people. If there's anyone else we can help, just keep this and give them some sort of, you know, like, print media or whatever for that. Um, the other thing too, is there's all these conversations that happen in customer service. So someone will call the office or maybe you're reaching out to them for whatever, and they'll, they'll give you these great compliments. You're like, we are so happy with our new, whatever you did for them. And they say, thanks. That's great. And that's where the conversation stops. These are great times when people, you know, give you positive feedback or even leave you a Google review online that, would make sense if they're happy enough to tell you directly or to tell everyone publicly, the next logical next step would be like, hey, by the way, if you're telling people and you're telling us, keep this in mind, we have this referral program because they're already mm -hmm. probably the most happy that they're gonna be with you at that point in time. So again, you have to promote it. You can't just have this thing, put it out there, expect people to do it. You have to promote it. Your, your customers are going to forget. You have to keep reminding them just in a tasteful, not overbearing way. That's so good. Okay. How do you track this thing? Yeah. I tell you what, there's something that pisses people off and that's if they refer somebody, they see that their neighbor took your service and they never got paid for it. Like if you think you're ever going to get another referral again, there's no way you are. So it's, huh. it's, it's really important that, I mean, you treat these things like golden opportunities. Like these are your most important leads because someone has really invested mentally into your company and now is going to feel very slighted if you don't do that. So um, one of the things that I think is important to do is to have like a clear, quick response. Because if, if someone gives you a referral and there's really no mechanism for you to respond to them that you got that referral and what you're going to do about it, like it. it already is this big question mark. So yeah. if they know right away, listen, thanks. We got your referral. This is what we're going to do. We're going to reach out. We're going to try to contact them three times in the next week to see if we can set up a time for them yeah. or whatever. Just let them have some faith in you right from the beginning. 
Um, you don't want any of these referrals to fall through the cracks. Not a single one. Every single one of them is important. Um, and then it's really great to, to, to report back to your customer whatever the outcome was. So if they become a customer, yeah, guess what? Congratulations, your referral so-and-so decided to use us for this service. We're going to be sending you this reward or whatever. If that's automated, fine. But even if it doesn't sell, it's important to report back to them. So we used to have, um, in our referral program, there was, there was some stipulations. Like they had to purchase a certain thing to actually get that payout. So there are, a, there are a few times here and there where, you know, say it was a $500 minimum. Someone purchased something for $250. I would still reach back personally, thank that person, that customer for the referral, explain to them that they didn't meet the criteria for purchase, but we really still um, appreciate their faith in us and, and thank them for the gesture and, and the vote of confidence. So the customer then knows, oh man, they're on top of this stuff. Like, it's not like I'm just sending them business and it's one-sided. They're like, you know, they're trying to, to foster this new relationship and it just didn't happen to meet the criteria. Uh -huh. um, and then just reporting in general is, is really critical. Just so, like I said at the beginning, like, you know, $300,000 of referrals in a year, whatever it is, like a lot of companies I'll talk to They'll say, yeah, we get a lot through referrals. And I'll ask them, well, how much revenue do you have attributed to referrals last year? They can't answer the question. It's this gut, this gut reaction. Like they're like, mm -hmm. it's just this sense that they have, or they hear it. Yeah, I, I know so-and-so uses you. Well, that's not reporting on what your referral program brought in. So it's really critical to know your numbers and, and use those as indicators. Like you're like, wow, we put all this effort in last year. This sucks well, maybe our incentive isn't good enough. What can we change next year? And then how can we track those numbers to see if anything changed? Or how many, how many did we have submitted to us? And that, that, can, that data can drive some changes. And the other thing is internally. So we, we talk a lot about as businesses, like we need to generate more referrals. There's a lot of people that are involved with that. You know, there are production people that are in the field doing the work. There are account managers or salespeople or estimators that are doing that as well. And there's customer service people internally in the office that are communicating and having relationships with, with customers. And so if you want them to be mentioning your referral program and promoting it, it's, you have to like kind of create this internal hype about it. Maybe there is some kind of incentive that you build internally for you know, people in those different roles, if they're getting referrals and, you know, maybe if, the, if you have a little, an additional little payout that you're incentivizing them, or maybe you just make a huge deal at your company meetings about these referrals and like, so-and-so like call out specific use, uh, uh, case, case studies, you know, Jennifer, the other day talked to this customer, they were really happy. And at the end of her call, she mentioned the referral program and put it in her notes. And now we see like two months later, Mrs. Jones referred this person, they purchased $200,000 worth of services from us. Mm. And you, you paint a larger, larger story yeah. than just ask for referrals, ask for referrals. And so yeah. that whole promotion is internal too. Like you have to track the program, you have to see what's going on and you have to report that to your team so that they understand how important and how critical this is in your company culture. <sighs> Brilliant, Chad. Now I know why you got elected vice president elected. of the United States. And I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just happy to have somebody like this on who's responsible for the goings on, on in the, in the country right now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm please just don't, please don't. No, no. This, Someone's going to be very upset yeah, with me right now. <laughs> exactly. I'm just messing with you, man. But so many brilliant nuggets in here. If you do three of those, this this first quarter of the year, this and prepare for this. You know, I know you guys are busier in the summer. I know we're busier. In, you know, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of promotions. There's a lot of things happening, and so these times we're in the middle of the winter. I don't know where are you in the um, country right now. Pennsylvania. It's cold, but not as cold as Minnesota. Yeah, you got this. You got this opportunity to be working on these kind of systems and make sure that they're because you know we're all running around like home service businesses in the summer running around with their heads cut off a little bit in the summer. So just prepare yourself now so that you're, you're good to go when it's time. Um, 
how can people uh, check out your guys's stuff, Chad? Yes. So landscape leadership, we only work with lawn and landscape companies. It's all, all that we yeah. do. Um, typically work with, with companies that are over $2 million in annual revenue. Um, and we do a variety of different things with them. So websites, video, paid ads, content, all kinds of stuff. Um, and then we advise our clients on stuff like this. You know, this is stuff that, you know, like we maybe we'll build a referral page on the website, but this, a lot of times it's just a lot of stuff they do. So um, if you want to check out our website, uh, learn about our clients, our services and things that we provide, just go to landscapeleadership.com. I would say though, even if you're a home services contractor and we would never do any work for you, a lot of the content that we create, you could apply to a lot of home services businesses, like in, in theory and in principle, there's a lot of really great stuff in there. Um, so yeah. subscribe to our blog. Um, if you'd like to follow me on LinkedIn or YouTube, you know, again, I'm very specialized. So I do stuff yeah. right for lawn and landscape Man, companies, but I'll there's, just say there's this is, I, think, from it. I think people need to cross pollinate because I think like roofing is learning right now from different industries. I think each of the home services sub niches need to be learning from the other ones. Like this is brilliant stuff that I haven't heard talked about in this niche, in our niche, you know, contractor, um, mainly roofers. Like, so people need to be looking out there. Like I like Tommy Mello's podcast. Who's like super, he's more garage doors and he like has a lot of HVAC guys on. So there's like, don't get stuck. If you, if you need them to say roofing every single time, just to get your brain moving, just kind of get out of that, get out of that, go to the landscaping guys that are doing this type of stuff, go to the different people and look at what people are doing. Look at what other home services are doing. Hey, in design, we're constantly looking at medical devices. We're looking at new software companies because those, they always have the best design. Yeah. So for different things you have to kind of branch out and i also think landscapers and roofers should be collaborating on referrals between them themselves too with homeowners i think there's a lot of cross-pollination that could go on if you get good at making other companies in your area look good by collaborating on video and content with them i think that um there's a lot of opportunity to be had as far as re getting referrals back and forth between companies too uh, the homeowners that they they that need other services that sometimes ask about these things. So I think that a lot of cross pollination, both on the idea side and on the referral side, people should be collaborating with each other. Yeah, so, absolutely. Chad, there's, thank you, you know, so much for being on, man. Sorry. Now I was going to say, there's you know trees are always falling on roofs. So if you're a roofer, exactly. you're not a best friend with a tree company, or vice versa, yeah. you know that yeah. that's a great natural referral partner you know, when it comes to getting like contractor referrals from each other, but yeah, there's a lot of industries that can be learning from each other. There's certainly some things in the roofing industry that I've been paying attention to and you're a big reason for that. So thanks, Tim. Appreciate that very much, man. I think honestly, we're just called, we're kind of bringing together some of the smartest people in this industry, like on our content. And it's just fun to see the modernization and I think roofing has been a little bit behind. And so I think that like seeing the modernization happen in real time and like watching, it's cool. And the different yeah. software companies and stuff like that on the come up and um, yeah, thanks for being uh, thanks for being a leader in that regard in your industry and we'll keep watching you too. And um, thanks everyone for listening uh, to the podcast and watching if you're watching on YouTube or wherever and um, have a good one. Bye.